ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Maybe. Sometimes. Tell me about this. I want to know more. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Holy cow. We've had a lot of fun. <laughs> I just walked by a car that had a license plate from Manitoba, Nicole. Ooh, ooh, so ooh. I looked, I had looked up before I came here, how far are we from Canada? And it's only about a two hour drive to Winnipeg from here. Ah. I could just pop right over the border. And let's tell everybody where it is you are. I'm in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Oh. North Dakota. Well, if you were going to pop over the border and drive two hours, I certainly wouldn't go to Winnipeg. <laughs> I didn't that podcast, did I? <laughs> there goes all of our listeners from Winnipeg. <laughs> we'll see a huge drop in uh... yeah. <laughs> listenership. You know, it would only take like one or two people turning us off to make a precipitous drop in our re- listenership. So, <laughs> Winnipeg, we love ya. Keep listening. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> yeah. No, wow. I was going up there. So how is Grand Forks, <laughs> North Dakota, this beautiful day? It is fine. It's it's very, very flat. <laughs> <laughs> and there's actually not that much snow on the ground, but it oh. was it was flurrying a little bit earlier and there's we're sharing a hotel with a team from Southern California. Oh my. So they're looking out the door. <laughs> they were all standing in the vestibule looking outside like what do we do? And <laughs> one of their adults came by. Okay, go outside. Come on, go. go, go. <laughs> like it's not gonna hurt you. Go outside. <laughs> yeah, it was quite it adorable. Yes, I mean they are ice skaters, so they are familiar with cold things, uh, yeah. right? Yes, you would. It's not like think. they've been on an island somewhere on a beach for all of their lives. No, they have warm jackets. <laughs> When it falls from the sky, I'm sure they're not sure what to do with that. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> what is I happening? She was in the rain last week when it was pouring rain here, and she refused to go outside. Because the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so. Our dog does that sometimes, too. She's familiar with weather, but she's like, you know what? I'll hold it. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't... Uh... We don't want to hold up this podcast, do we? <laughs> but up, up, nice segue. <laughs> that even makes sense. I don't know. So <laughs> let's get started. All Shall right. We? Yes. Sure. Okay. Hello and welcome to Parenting Roundabout, a weekly podcast about the things that parents are talking about, obsessing about, and complaining about right now. I'm Nicole Eredix, and with me today are Terry Morrow. Hi, Terry. Hello. And Catherine Haleko. Hi there. And today on the podcast, we are going to be talking about the Super Bowl on our Friday speed round, shout out some stuff we like on the Roundabout Roundup, and do some shameless self-promotion. But first, we're going to have a little discussion about our social lives, mm. um, if we have one, first of all. <laughs> Such as they are. <laughs> and whether or not it's online or offline, or both, or do your friends even keep in touch with you in order to have a social life? <laughs> Carrying forward a speed round discussion from earlier yeah. this week. Nicole's right. still holding a grudge against the possibility yeah. that we might not stay in touch with her. <laughs> to her standard. Yeah, exactly, yes. We would in stay in touch, it just might not be. <laughs> it would not be up to my expectations, it would be subpar friendship. Do, birth, do oh, birthday no. greetings on Facebook once a year count? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. No I'm way. Out. <laughs> I'm going to give you a list of expectations when we break up from the podcast. If we ever do. <laughs> Tell you, you got to just start another podcast. Then you'll always be in touch with me. <laughs> up to perpetual mm. podcasting. That's my social life right there. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah, we thought we would we would ask each other do you get out much or (laughs) has the internet or maybe I should specify podcasting uh, replaced going out and being with people, Terry? I mean, seriously, I talk to you guys more than I talk to anybody else in my real life. So you're my best friends. (laughs) Except for the ones that live in your house, right? Yes, yes. Present company accepted. But uh, I really don't get out much. I don't get out pretty much at all. uh, Every now and then, uh, 
no more than every now and then. Two or three times a month, my friend will come out on a Saturday and we'll go out and get coffee and, and she and her husband will stay the day. That's about the extent of my social life. And if they get busy or she hurt her foot recently and wasn't able to come out, that's, you know, then I go back to my hermit-like ways. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, any time... And you have two parties a year. I have two parties a year, yes. This is how my husband and I maintain a social life. <laughs> so we have two parties a year, so people at least see us twice a year. And it also makes sure that our house gets cleaned twice a year also, which is important. Um, yeah. And, uh, we've, you know, we've gone to a few parties uh, recently. And I went to a wake, you know. That's, <laughs> that's oh, not going to happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, You're uh, getting that in your social life, although I guess the older we get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm not quite at the at the place where that's a major part of my social life. But uh, I did see and talk to people. I, I really feel like I should get out more. I should do more things. But when the time comes... And it's a choice between should I work for two hours and then maybe be able to sleep tonight or should I go out and do something and then come home and still have all this work sitting waiting for me. That's a hard decision. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not the most outgoing person in the world. I'm kind of a homebody anyway. I don't need a whole lot of push to not go someplace. <laughs> so mm -hmm. now I have work as an excuse and I cling to it but I did go to community band practice the other night I was very proud of myself after having skipped the entire fall season and the first few practices of this year we'll see if I go next week <laughs> stay tuned everyone <laughs> yeah it's bad how about you Nicole are you uh, a goer I'm... goer outer yeah I've always had a tendency to want to be going out and about and not being at home I think it's just more the connection with people so now that there's the internet and podcasting <laughs> yeah. my cup is full uh at home and um I don't do as much socializing as I used to so although I do I find maybe once or twice a week I'll go out and have lunch or coffee with a friend but and then maybe once a month we'll have dinner out with some friends but you know, not to the level I used to be, that's for sure. I'm content to have friends online and virtual friends, <laughs> texting <laughs> friends. <laughs> that's, I'm content to do that. Then... Yeah. Yeah. The internet has certainly made it easy to have the illusion of friendship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of a, kind of a mix. Yeah. I don't, Catherine, I feel like you get out more than us. Yes. Book club. I don't and... know. Well, there's book club once a month and... Uh, like a dinner club once mm -hmm. a month where it's like a, a group of couples and we have oh. a dinner party at one person's house roughly once a month and the host provides the main dish and everyone else brings other things. Oh, that's um, so fun. It's nice. It's a good way to to do dinner parties because when it's at your house, you're not doing all the work. You're mm -hmm. only doing, I mean, you're cleaning and <laughs> you're um, cooking one one major thing mm -hmm. um but then p other people are bringing everything else yeah. so mm -hmm. it's kind of nice um yeah but other than that like my husband and I are really terrible about going out with each other mm -hmm. <laughs> and um because he you know he's becoming more and more hermitous in his <laughs> <laughs> in his old age or something <laughs> I don't know. It's a word now, I guess. Um, yeah, he, he, you know, he's really content <laughs> to stay home and I'm less content to stay home, but, uh -huh. um, but it's hard. You know, I don't, I also don't like just going without him. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's challenging sometimes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, like right now I'm on a skating trip. So there's always a big social element to that because oh, yeah. you know you're you're on the bus for many hours so mm -hmm. you may be chit-chatting with your seatmate on the bus for a long time and then a lot of times the parents share meals while the kids are off doing things uh -huh. uh, where they're, they're practicing or sometimes they have a team meal where the parents aren't invited um so it's it's rather social actually <laughs> <laughs> if you maybe can hear like children in the hallway <laughs> <laughs> making making noise yeah yeah that's true when your kids are in school sometimes there's a there's a social outlet for that yeah. I mean you don't want your whole social life to be through your kids but I mean I went to 
band meetings all the time when my daughter was in high school that was a big deal and trips and football games and you know we'd get out and talk to a lot of people and you know there were people I considered myself friends with that once we weren't in this our kids weren't in the same school thing I've never talked to them again but right. so I do kind of miss in a way I kind of miss that that social outlet and in a way I'm really glad I don't have to deal with it all again because <laughs> I don't know where I would find the time or the energy yeah it just recently, actually, on Facebook, um, <laughs> we, my, some friends and I were having a discussion. And first of all, it was, it sprang from something about vaccines. So oh, you can, geez. if you can believe it, it was totally civil and respectful. It and hard to believe. It was amazing. <laughs> um, and, and at one point someone said, oh, I wish I was going to see you all on the playground because you were all moms that had kids in elementary school together and Aww. and we used to when we went to pick up our kids after school we would let them play and we oh, would sure. stand around and talk and obviously we don't we don't get to do that anymore yeah. and we all we all miss it so mm -hmm. we said do you think there's any way we could have lunch <laughs> <Just> like <laughs> um so we're gonna try to yeah. schedule lunch but we'll see how that goes yeah. so I don't know. Do you think it's important to have that social life outside of your family? Do you think your kids kind of need to see that? Um, yeah. To have, have like almost like role modeling that for your kids? Yeah, I think that is a good thing. I think you should do that. I think it's important to see adults having a life, but I sure have not been doing it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, not children. Not as I do. <laughs> but yeah no I think it's good for them to what see do you how you you know yeah. see how a friendship is maintained and <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. how you know the workings of friendship the ins and outs of it and yeah. ups and downs I don't know I was just thinking when I was a kid my parents were very social. Right? And maybe it was just the time. Maybe it was just, I mean, it was in the, the 60s. Um, you know, they had a square dance group that they belonged to, and they went and did that on a regular basis, and they had friends from that. And then they had a, a bridge groups that they went, participated in, and then they had this group of friends that lived in the town we used to live in, and we would go see them all the time, and they were all aunts and uncles, you know, I called them all aunts yeah. and uncles, but that was a regular group of people. They were really very, and then my mom had her own groups through church and stuff like that, so I had that modeled for me, and whether it's just we live in a different sort of time now, or I'm just not that kind of <laughs> person I have confidence issues I don't know I mean there's been times in my life where I've been that way but I'm perfectly comfortable sitting home not doing that so mm -hmm. I don't I do kind of wonder whether the practice of adults having their own things to do has kind of fallen away do you guys see feel like that yeah I mean, well it's like you said you're so you're so busy doing the things that stem from what your kids are doing yeah where well, our parents didn't that's do true. that yeah. I mean, do you ever go play cards with a group of people or, I mean, does anybody square dance anymore or ballroom <laughs> dancing or anything? I don't think any of those things even exist. I don't know if that's good or bad, right. but it's different. Yeah. I don't know. I think maybe because of the weather and the population, there's a lot of groups here for adults. Like I yeah. feel like mm -hmm. there's lots of different things if you had an interest yeah to, to join it and but I just I don't know I don't know what it is I feel I'm much more content with myself mm -hmm. and being at home than having to go out and seek those things out but my parents were so social they were always yeah. they were yeah. out all the time or we had yeah. friends over or and yeah. I also wonder like you know when my kids were really little and I would need a babysitter mm -hmm. I was hated dealing with that like yeah. finding the babysitter scheduling the babysitter organizing the babysitter oh let's just stay home <laughs> it's right. and, and I wonder if it just kind of like got turned into like a rut that I'm that I'm currently in you know yeah. <laughs> like they don't need a babysitter anymore but that became like just the status quo although yeah. I am finding now that 
my well, my son he lives away from home and my daughter is now driving like I have larger chunks of time than myself yeah <laughs> I don't want to say that out loud so my daughter <laughs> doesn't hear that um, <laughs> and I find I think that I will might get to a point where I might become more social because I mm-hmm. do have more time I think a lot of the restriction is in you know, you're busy running your kids here and there, you've got dinner and then Mm -hmm. you work and like, there's just a whole, and you know, people commute far for their jobs. That's true. But Nicole, now that you have all this time to socialize, you have no wheels. How are you going to get there? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) You have to find a friend to pick you up. Yeah. Your friend has to come and get you. (laughs) Oh, right. That's my other constraint. There's always something. Yeah, you know, I figured out. <laughs> I have to like do like a car share thing. What about your? Do your spouses have anything that they do on their own? Do they have any social thing? My husband does not. No, oh. my no. mine actively mine does discourages the dinner. any potential for us yeah. having anything like that. Mine does the dinner thing. Well, that's nice, but that's it. Yeah. Actually. Mine does. He, you know what? Actually, he probably has more social life than I do because he, really? he walks three times a week with two of his friends, really? and they walk. They walk in the morning. They get up, wow, and they meet at six a.m. and walk for an hour. Wow. Three times wow. a week. Do that. That's cool. I know. Let me. What a but... social butterfly he is. I know. <laughs> I'd like six a.m. Though I don't think I would get up for a friend at six a.m. <laughs> Have you ever walked with him, Nicole? Never. It's a guy. Not at, not at 6 a.m. <laughs> you sure they're walking that whole time? They're not stopping I, off somewhere? I, I, they tell me that they're walking. I don't know. <laughs> he tells me that they're walking. I know. I would not walk with him. It's, I don't know. No. <laughs> There's probably no bars open at that time, so it's probably safe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just stopping off at Starbucks for a while. Eating pastries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of social events, and particularly social events that may be of interest to men, but maybe not, maybe maybe we're all interested in this, uh, the Super Bowl is coming up this Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. It is, uh, it's on so. Sunday, yes. My condolences to you for your team, Catherine. Yeah, well, they didn't really deserve it, did they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my team, your team eliminated any team I would have any interest in before that, so... right. I will be watching, as I do every year, purely for the commercials. And yeah. possibly, the, who's doing the halftime? Lady Gaga. Oh, well, then not for the halftime, just for the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be taking a break. But, you know, I know some people have people over for the Super Bowl, or they go to somebody's house, or they go to a restaurant. Uh, when, when I was single and belonged to the singles group, I met my husband in. We went to a bar for Super Bowl Sunday, I remember. There was a buffet and all that stuff. Um, now it's usually just my husband watching the football game and me watching the commercials and our kids flitting in and out. We're not really social about it. But how about you guys? Do you have people over? Do you go to somebody's house? Do you go to some establishment? Or do you not really pay attention to it at all? Catherine, will you be watching it even though your heart has been broken? (laughs) I will probably watch it. In the past, we have had people over, especially if it was a Packer Super Bowl, um, yeah. which there have been a few in the yeah. past <laughs> few years, or we've gone to a friend's house or whatever. Um, this year, I will be helping run a skating competition all day, oh and my. I won't be done until like four o'clock. So that seems like bad I planning. will certainly not be having anyone over. Uh-huh. Um, if I get invited somewhere, then sure, I might turn up (laughs) hint hint (laughs) you can come over to my house it's a little bit of a yeah that'll be fun (laughs) how about you nicole is there a super bowl or we we discussed that y'all are not so interested in football right no not at all not taking on the american (laughs) pastimes no i uh like what super bowl i don't honestly it i don't pay attention to it at all is that sad I don't know. You should watch. No. You got to watch the commercials so you can like have the water cooler conversations the next Actually, day. well, last year, um, our little local market was in one of the commercials. Really? 
I did watch that. Yeah, a little market down the street was oh. the background for one of the commercials. Oh. Um, yeah, but no, I don't follow. It's one thing I don't really pay attention to, and neither does my husband. Neither neither of us are big sports, mm-hmm. like TV watchers or sports watchers. Like yeah. we enjoy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think probably the only thing I'll watch is figure skating, but um, neither of us really follow any kind mm. of sport TV. So yeah. we, yeah, it's not really. We went to a Super Bowl party when we first moved here because we felt like it was like the right the thing, thing to do, assimilate <laughs> into the culture of yes. <laughs> America. And it was really weird because, yeah, there were people. Half the people were in the living room watching TV; the other half were in the kitchen. Yeah talking and um it was kind of boring <laughs> bad party <sighs> oh well well Catherine and i will be discussing the commercials on round two next uh-huh. week so watch them and then talk back to us about them but uh other than that my my husband enjoys watching football and baseball on tv he will not ever go anywhere to watch sports he does not believe in that but He'll watch it on TV. He doesn't believe in that. I mean, he'll go watch. If my son is playing baseball, he will go watch and help. But I think the whole paying a lot of money to sit with noisy strangers and buy expensive food does not appeal to him. See, now, we spend that money on concerts. We go to concerts. So we put our money into that as opposed to... (laughs) Game. <laughs> I spend money on nothing along those lines. I'm even not sure I want to spend money on Netflix. That's how cheap I am. But anyway, um, that will be it for our speed round for this Friday podcast. And remember that you can hear a new speed round every Monday through Thursday. And now we move on to things that we enjoy even more than football, which would be pretty much everything. <laughs> we want to bring you some of the things that we've read or seen or used recently that we would like to shout out and share with you. Terry, what do you have? Well, this is something that I guess I can share. I, I put together a playlist for myself on Apple Music, which will be of use to nobody who doesn't have Apple Music, but I'll put a link to it anyway. Certainly, you could probably assemble it yourself on whatever streaming music service you enjoy but i like to have while i'm working i like to have instrumental music because words will distract me from the words i am either trying to read or write and so i'm always looking around for new instrumental things and i got the idea the other day once the oscar nominations came out to find on apple music all of the oscar nominated scores and make myself a playlist of them so that between now and when the Oscars are on, I can do all my work to these scores, and then I will actually have an opinion about them (laughs) when the the Oscars come up. I will at least have heard them many, many times. So if you wish to put together a playlist of this nature for yourself, uh, the scores are from La La Land, and what you want is the score and not the soundtrack album of people singing. Uh, there's two different album covers of them, uh, and also Lion, Jackie, Passengers, and Moonlight. If you can't find them on your streaming service, I found it was easier to find the name of the composers in a article about the Oscar nominations and plug those in, and I was able to find them better than typing in the name of the movie. So I'll try to have that information in our show notes. But uh, listen along with me, cool. will That's you, a good idea. to this mm-hmm. Oscar-nominated instrumental music. It's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Catherine, how about you? What are you recommending or shouting out this week? Um, I'll also go with a pop culture-ish thing. Okay. Um, in the On the Bus, I half watched two <laughs> kids' movies. Um, <laughs> but the one I watched more of and paid more attention to and um, appealed more was the BFG, okay. um, which, which came out pretty recently based on a Roald Dahl story, which... I don't think I've ever read actually. Um, but the, the, the movie was pretty charming and I liked that the, the little girl who played the heroine, um, she looked like I did when I was a little kid with like (laughs) the big eighties glasses and kind of like, you know, those glasses and sort of like, chin length hair and bangs but not (laughs) in in a cute stylish way (laughs) um so that appealed to me and also they had the queen of england played by um penelope wilton who was on downton abbey who played 
Isabel Crawley on Downton Abbey, and mm-hmm. she's just, you know, like a, a famous um, British act, actress. And she was just super charming as Queen Elizabeth. I mean, they never said she was Queen Elizabeth specifically, <laughs> but she looked, she was made to look like her. And, um, and she was just delightful. So I enjoyed it for that, especially. The BFG. Okay. Well, thank you. And I'm going to shout out another app this week because I like new and fun apps. Although I don't think this is really new, but it's new to me. It's called <laughs> Typic, T-Y-P-I-C. Okay. And it's an app that you can um, fancy up your photos with or create oh. a graphic or, you know, you can type something and lay it over top or you can hmm. change the filter and they've got all these fun doodles to add to it. So I was just having fun with that this morning, and um, yeah, it's kind of my my go-to if I want to jazz up a photo. Cool. So. Sounds like something to, fun to play with in our long, friendless, lonely days at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's important to have distractions. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, a big shout out to Typic for distracting me. Nice. <laughs> You can draw little friends into your pictures, right? That's right. (laughs) Make it look like I have friends. (laughs) Oh, this is going nowhere fun. All right. And now for our final segment today, we're going to do a little shameless self-promotion and direct you to some things on our sites that we think you should take a look at. Terry, what do you have this week? I wrote a blog post for Friendship Circle on 10 things that parents should bring to an IEP meeting, uh, ranging from, you know, useful things like a notebook and a plan about what you want to ask to more frivolous things like, you know, maybe bring some cookies. Be disarming to the people you're coming to. And also, if things don't go your way, you can just drown your sorrows in sugar right there and then. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so that is up on the Friendship Circle blog, and I will put a link to it in our show notes. Okay, and Nicole, what did, would you like to share today? I just want to remind everybody that together is better in this day and age. <laughs> <laughs> Despite what we have said in this podcast about really wanting to be alone. <laughs> so my, I'm going to um, mention a blog post that I wrote a couple of years ago, and it's called 10 Reasons for Inclusive Schools. And one of the reasons is because you build social skills. Ah. So um, <laughs> that's what I'm shouting out this week. All right. It's too late for me, but other people <laughs> learn those social skills. May benefit. <laughs> <laughs> How many you got Well, I... I have a piece on very well on kids sports surprises you should know about. Um, And, you know, I could have added, like, you will have to be friends with the other parents (laughs) on your kids' team. No, that's not in there. It should be probably. So that's on very well. You can find the link on the show notes today. And that is it for this week's episode of Parenting Roundabout. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us every week. You can listen to podcast episodes on ParentingRoundabout.com or download them from iTunes. Please subscribe so that you get all of our podcasts and mini podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter where I am at Mamatude, Nicole is at Nicole Eredix, and Catherine is at About Family Fit. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at Roundabout Chat and look for us on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, YouTube, and Instagram too. Best of all, stop by our blog at ParentingRoundabout.com and read recaps, find links on all the stories we mentioned, and talk back in the comments. Thanks to John Morin for providing our in-and-out music, and I wish everybody a great week. (laughs) 